To end this Halloween season and to wrap up my very successful series on the 90s adaptation of Goosebumps, today we are going to be looking at the 2015 adaptation. Which Goosebumps is it an adaptation of? All of them. Starring Dylan Minnick two years before he would play a shy boy infatuated with a ghostly brunette girl named Hannah. Here he plays a shy boy infatuated with a ghostly brunette girl named Hannah. And it's like fine because it's funny, but the story is... Well, let's get into it. Hi, I'm Lainey and I talk about Goosebumps, so also other things like media and TV and other movies. In the next coming weeks, I'll be doing a lot of new different things and if you're interested, you should totally subscribe and like and leave a comment. All of the things that the YouTubers regularly tell you to do. Following the death of his father, Zach's mom has decided that they should move closer to family. Zach is not exactly happy with the situation. Hi, from New York, it's my sister Gail. A special guest, my nephew Zach, get in here. Ooh, we get a fun ant character. This, this is a challenge for the actor. She has to walk a very thin line between charmingly annoying and just regular annoying. Let's see if she can do it. Oh, I almost forgot I got a present for you because I'm a cool aunt. This is from my new signature men's line. Ooh, I think she's gonna pull it off. I'm rooting for you, Aunt Lorraine. Zach goes outside to get some air and encounters his new next door neighbor, Hannah. What is with Dylan and these brunette girls named Hannah? They are interrupted by Hannah's dad, Jack Black, who tells Zach to stay away from Hannah. You stay away from my daughter. You stay away from me. We won't have a problem. Zach is not the most likable character in the beginning of this movie, which I like because that means he gets to experience character growth. On his first day of school, he learns that his mom is going to be the new principal of the high school he's going to be attending. And this is like 10 minutes before he starts his first day of classes. Very confusing to me. I don't understand why this was kept secret from Zach. It seems like he should have already known about this. You know what? It doesn't matter. At a back to school pep rally, we're introduced to Chan, whose only purpose is comic relief. You taking anyone to the dance? No. Hey, we should go together. Together? Oh, but not like together, together. Bad movie. Bad. It is 2015. You have no excuse for homophobic jokes. At the school, Zach asks Hannah if there's anything she likes to do for fun. She says yes and takes him to the woods offering no explanation. And you are not gonna believe the Manic Pixie Dream Girl nonsense that is about to happen. Hannah shows him this amusement park in the middle of the woods, which I guess was abandoned several years ago, but still has electricity and relatively well-maintained grounds. Okay, I do not believe that no one goes here. This should be the hottest spot in town. No parental supervision? Where are the other teens? And then Hannah makes Zach climb up this giant Ferris wheel so they can talk. And like the actors do have good chemistry together, which I like. I do believe they, they're like flirting. It's nice. Uh, but I wasn't here for a rom-com. I was here for Goosebumps. So this entire nice little scene, the only thing I'm thinking about is how on earth has nobody realized that this Abandoned amusement park steals electricity. They return home to find Jack Black waiting for them. That night, Zack sees Hannah and her dad loudly arguing inside and becomes worried that her dad is going to physically harm her. Zack takes immediate action and runs next door and demands to see Hannah. When Jack Black refuses, he goes home and calls 911. You're under arrest! Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. I love that enthusiasm. I love that. Keep it, but we're just, we're not there yet. Another scream was heard in the background and Jack Black reveals it was just the TV. I didn't know being an audiophile was a crime. Like a, wh a what a file? Whoa, 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 whoa. That just means that he is a connoisseur of high-end audio equipment. So the cops don't seem interested in doing anything, so Zach tries to run upstairs to find Hannah. Should I tase him? Oh. I'll tase him. I like that moxie, but we're gonna hold off. He's escorted out of the house by the police and his embarrassed mom tells him to go home. As you can see, things are not going super well for Zach. Dale! It's Lorraine. I can see you. It's the night of the school dance and Zach is staying in, but his mom has to go chaperone since she's the principal. She's asked his cool aunt to come stay with them since he's been going through it. Zach is bedazzling with his aunt and sees Hannah and her father fighting again. Zach makes up an excuse about needing to study so he can go investigate. Outside, he runs into Champ who is on his way to the dance. Zach sneaks into the basement and asks Champ to be his lookout. <laughs> Oh man, you're supposed to be the lookout! Yeah, that's not going to change, I'll just be the lookout, you know, into here! No! So now they're both breaking and entering. Sure. 
The two continue to explore the house looking for Hannah and find a bookshelf full of locked Goosebumps manuscripts. These are kids' books. Okay, kids' books help you fall asleep. These books keep you up all night. And Zach does this thing that they do in movies where the person is like, I'm gonna do this thing just to prove to you that the thing is not a big deal, or then they do the thing and it ends up being a big deal, and so that happens. He like opens the book. Hannah finally appears and tells the boys they need to leave immediately. Zach then opens the book, causing the abominable snowman to appear. Ooh, so it's one of these movies. This has been done before. Instead of making a movie about one goosebumps story, they make the movie about goosebumps as a series itself. It's trying to be meta and smart, uh, but it, it's it's stupid and it makes the story worse and I do not like it. And the worst part was, I was kind of vibing with this movie up until this point, but it's, it's all downhill from here, unfortunately. The abominable snowman runs off and Hannah goes after it, leading to Zack and Champ to go after Hannah. Hannah then leads him to an ice rink because somehow she knows that's where the snowman is gonna go because it's cold there? How did the snowman know where the ice rink was? The gang is almost killed by the monster, but are saved at the last second by Jack Black. You know, I just realized I've been referring to him as Jack Black this whole movie. What, what, what's the dad's name again? You're him, aren't you? Hmm? You're R.L. Stein. His books suck. Stop trying to be Stephen King, man. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Steve King. Steve King wishes he could write like me. The choice to include R.L. Stein as a character in this movie was one of its more bizarre choices, especially since he's kind of an ass in the film. This isn't even a nice portrayal of him. Hello, I'm R.L. Stein. I write the Goosebumps books. R.L. Stein appears in some of the original Goosebumps series, and he's really nothing like how Jack Black portrays him. And I know Jack Black wasn't trying to portray the actual R.L. Stein, but then. What's the point of making this character R.L. Stein if it's not supposed to be him? So Zack demands an explanation of what's going on and Jack Black gives this very sad and mean-spirited explanation about how he writes stories because he was bullied as a kid, so he grew up to write books that would traumatize the people who hurt him. And then one day, they actually became real. So I actually found an interview with R.L. Stein where they asked him about Jack Black and his portrayal, and this is what he had to say. I'm gonna do my best R.L. Stein voice. Oh, I love Jack Black. He was too mean, I thought. In the film, he throws away a kid's cell phone, but he's a riot. He said, Bob, I'm gonna play a sinister version of you, and that's what he did. For some reason, when they started filming, suddenly had an Orson Welles accent. I don't talk like that, but I thought he was hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. Any voice acting roles? Hit me up. Hello, Papa. How long's it been? Of course, no Goosebumps story would be complete without Slappy. True to the original story, Slappy is a chaos monster. He steals the books and the car and begins to release the monsters around town. So when I first did this, I thought it was gonna be cool to be like, and this was a reference to this book, and this was a reference to this book, and this huge and this. Blah, 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 blah. And then I realized it literally did not matter. For example, there's this scene where they're attacked by gnomes and it's based on the episode with the gnomes that I don't remember the name from. But in that episode, it was scary because the kids got turned into gnomes and they were mysterious and they like walked around at night. And in this one, it's just a bunch of little gnomes fighting them. Like, and none of the like cameos have anything to do with the stories themselves. So meanwhile, Slappy goes to the police department. Who you calling dummy? It's talking. What is that thing? Before they can fire, they are frozen in place by the aliens, which is completely unrealistic. Real police officers would have fired several rounds already. The monsters are causing chaos in the town. Zack finally suggests to Jack Black that he write a new Goosebumps story that encompasses all of the monsters that have been released. Duh, that's, you could do this all along? What have you been waiting for, Jack Black? And I guess the thing he was waiting for was his typewriter because he needs the special typewriter because it writes the stories through him? What? Are they implying that R.L. Stein didn't write Goosebumps? The weird cursed typewriter did? We learn that Slappy has taken down the local cell tower so that nobody in town has any reception. And I don't know enough about cell phone towers to know if that makes sense or not, so we're just gonna turn off our brains and not think about it anymore. In the car, they are attacked by the invisible boy and a giant praying mantis. 
And that's why you always wear your seatbelts, kids. I'm gonna point out this next scene in the grocery store only because it confused me. I'm parched. Let's just take one. I'm sure they'll understand. Really? <laughs> why does R.L. Stein encourage Champ to steal the soda? At first I thought, oh, he's gonna like shake it up and use it as a weapon or something, but this never comes back. They have this one scene where Jack Black is like, steal the soda, they don't mind, and he steals the soda, and then they never talk about it again. What was I supposed to take away from that? So in the grocery store, they are then attacked by Werewolf Boy. Why, why, why are we in the grocery store again? Is it a, a shortcut to the school, or I think it's just product placement? The group is saved at the last second by Aunt Lorraine, who hits the werewolf with her car. Hello. Uh, uh, hi, hello. Hi. Oh my god. They're gonna make these two be in love, aren't they? They're gonna make them be in love, and I'm gonna hate it, I'm gonna hate it. Aunt Lorraine, you're doing so good. While walking through the cemetery, Hannah starts glowing and is like, is everything okay, Zach? And Zach says, yes. Does this look okay to you, Zach? But we don't get any time to explore this further as zombies have begun to rise from the graves. Finally, they reach the high school where R.L. Stein has been keeping his magic typewriter in a display case. I know it doesn't make sense that he keeps his typewriter at this random school, especially because he says him and Hannah move every few years. Also, Hannah's homeschooled. Why is this typewriter here? They never explain it. I feel like I'm just doing cinema sins. Zach pulls Jack Black aside and confronts him about Hannah. In case you're confused, Hannah is Hannah from the Goosebones book, The Ghost Next Door, meaning she's also one of the monsters and not actually real. Jack Black created her because he was lonely and Zach empathizes with him and opens up about his dad dying. Truth is, I'm afraid of being alone. After my dad died, I should have went out too. Maybe we can both start over. And now that the men have felt their feelings, it is time to defeat the monsters once and for all. Zach, Hannah, and Champ go to the dance to inform the school of the monster attack. This is going to sound insane, but monsters have invaded Madison. <laughs> Hear me out. They should have made a bomb threat. I know. I know, unethical, but it would have worked. However, it doesn't even matter if the kids believe them because the monsters soon attack the school. Champ is given the opportunity to save a pretty girl from a werewolf, and for that act, he is rewarded. You saved my life, Champ. It's actually Champ. Women are not prizes, bad movie, bad movie. Anyways, Slappy breaks Arnold Stein's hand so he could not write. They continue to find monsters, blah, 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 blah. It's not very interesting. The low budget of the original TV series meant that they had to use a lot of practical effects, which I actually think is one of the show's highlights. This is just a generic CGI mess, and I hate it. R.L. Stein tasks Zach to finish the book, which feels like the conclusion to an emotional arc that was never started. He writes that all of the monsters disappear back into the book one by one, and as Hannah begins to be sucked back into the book, he realizes that he forgot to add the line, except for Hannah, which is so stupid. <laughs> Zack doesn't want to open the book because it would cause Hannah to disappear, however Hannah reveals she's known all along she was a book character and goes back into the book herself. It is unnecessarily sad. In conclusion, Zack proudly hugs his mom at school, showing that their relationship has improved. R.L. Stein and Aunt Lorraine start dating, and he starts a new position as the English teacher at the high school. Why does he need an English teaching job? He's like a quadrillion heir. He sold millions, millions of books in this universe, in the movie. Why? Why? When did they mention he likes teaching? And we do get one more final Goosebumps twist. Hannah is back forever because R.L. Stein realizes that he could just use his magical typewriter to say, never mind, Hannah's back. And she is. All right, class. Let's go around and see what everybody learned in this movie. First, Zach learned to talk about his feelings and not be mean to his widowed mother. Good lesson, that's fine. Second, Aunt Lorraine learned nothing, but she was flawless from the beginning, so that's also okay. Third, Hannah began the film a manic pixie ghost girl and ended a manic pixie real girl. She learned nothing. Moving on. Champ learned that the prize for doing a good deed is a girlfriend, which is a thumbs down bad lesson. And that leaves us with R.L. Stein. What did this fictionalized version learn? R.L. Stein began the movie angry and isolated and it ended with him teaching English? I think the lesson is that R.L. Stein also needs to talk about his feelings more. If this character was, was not supposed to be R.L. Stein, I feel like I would not be as critical for it, but it, it makes me sad that 
they are outside he's created all these wonderful stories and they reduce it to the only reason he made it was because he's just like trouble and boy and he makes it to hurt people and he's mean and he's angry and he might hit his daughter like it's such a mean portrayal of R.L. Stein. I know R.L. Stein doesn't care but I do. Overall, this movie is mediocre and forgettable. Jack Black's performance and some funny writing make it bearable, but it's not enough to make up for its uninspired story. It lacks the charm of the original 90s series and is overall a poor reflection of R.L. Stein's style. Adaptations of R.L. Stein's stories are still being made, like real adaptations, not like whatever this was. So I'm not even mad this existed. They tried something different and it failed. So just don't do it again. If you are 11 years old and you consider yourself edgy, you'd probably like this movie, but if not, just go watch a few episodes of the original Goosebumps. You'll probably have a better time. Um, I'm not sure what this movie was. I'm not even gonna rate it. I haven't thought about what I would rate it. Thank you for watching my video. If you have not already, you should subscribe, leave a comment, like, have you seen this movie? What did you think of it? Next month, I'm gonna be doing things that the algorithm likes because if you, the guest people, don't like to watch this content as much, that's okay.